afternoon sir good afternoon good afternoon to the audience uh, today i'm going to be uh, presenting the topic uh, plural effusion so presenting complaints were uh, increased breathing difficulty for the past 10 days okay. and uh, pain while coughing for the past 8 days a 68 year old male presented complaining of increased difficulty breathing since 10 days it was insidious in onset and has gradually increased in the past 10 days it is not associated with any aggravating or relieving factors mm-hmm. he complains of pain while coughing the pain is uh, usually in the right lower chest and was acute in onset when it began and has aggravated and aggravates on coughing and relieved on taking rest okay. and the patient has no history of fever or green greenish uh, sputum of lung okay. past history is a known case of uh, ca lung for the, he was diagnosed 3 months back uh, he is a sister he has systemic hypertension for the past 8 years and he is now on telmisartan okay and no history of diabetes mellitus or dyslipidemia okay coming to the general examination pulse was 87 beats per minute regular rhythm bp was 130 by 86 uh, respiratory rate 18 per minute saturation 98% and temperature was a febrile uh palo was absent ictus absent sinuses absent but clubbing was present so you have to tell the grade grade of clubbing yes sir so clubbing was of uh, grade 3 okay so where all you get clubbing so clubbing the causes we can divide it first into the pulmonary causes okay pulmonary causes most uh, common one is we see it in uh, ca lung and okay. also we can even see it in suppurative lung disease okay um interstitial lung disease okay now coming to the uh, cardiac cause of uh, cu- uh, clubbing uh, the septal defects can cause okay and as well as atrial myxoma can okay. be another cause uh, infective endocarditis yes sir infective endocarditis is the one condition where mm-hmm. you get painful clubbing painful clubbing. then liver disease liver disease chronic liver disease uh, then inflammatory bowel diseases uh, disease. all these things you can get clubbing but yeah. most common condition is always liver Uh, patho- sorry lung pathology in that malignancy is very important cl yes sir in that cl there is another important feature that is last grade of clubbing is hypertrophic osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis. Okay. okay that is very important okay yes, sir now coming to the systemic exam first we will inspect the upper respiratory tract the external nose appeared normal no deviation of the nasal septum no sinus tenderness no okay. post nasal drip and the throat was within normal, normal limits on examination coming to the lower respiratory tract uh, inspection trachea appears shifted to the left shifted to left that means what uh, sir trachea it has been uh, the usually trachea will be lying along a straight line okay but over here on inspection the trachea is appearing to have a slight tilt towards so sir left side yes sir so what are the causes for left side shift of trachea is a left side shift uh, it can from if it there can be causes from the same side as well as from the opposite okay. side if it's uh, from the opposite side uh, pl- plural effusion can so cause so something which is pushing the trachea to opposite that it can be effusion it can be mass mass okay but here also something can pull the trachea towards Same, same side. side like fibrosis collapse all these things yes sir okay here if it is pleural effusion that may be pressing the trachea to opposite side okay here uh, shape of the chest does not appear very symmetrical okay uh, there is bulging of the right intercostal spaces okay no dilated veins and mediastinum as well appears slightly shifted okay upper mediastinum and lower mediastinum both are shifted to opposite side yes. left side okay yes sir on palp on palpation as well trachea is uh, very evidently shifted to okay. the left okay. apex beat is in the normal left fifth intercostal space medial to mid clavicular line uh, chest expansion is reduced on the right, right side. side and there is reduced vocal fremitus okay and no tenderness or no local rise in temperature okay vocal fremitus can be increased in which all conditions the so, tactile vocal fremitus uh, will be increased when in case of uh, pneumonia anything consolidation like Sorry. wherever you get a percussion impairment with increased uh, bronchial breath sounds where there all you get vocal fremitus increases yes. okay this something like that uh, uh, bronchial breath sound is produced due to consolidation same type of lesions can produce 
increase vocal prometheus so with all condition you can get reduced breath sounds their vocal prometheus also will be reduced right. like a pleural effusion you have reduced breath sound you get a reduced vocal prometheus yes sir and on percussion uh, the only area that uh, that showed an abnormality was the right inframammary area and the abnormality noted mm-hmm. was the note of percussion was stony dull in nature okay okay stony dullness indicates so stony dullness is a classic uh, clinical finding in pleural effusion pleural effusion okay now coming to auscultation uh, the breath sounds were diminished uh, on the right side okay Uh, the vocal resonance was also diminished on the right side and bronchial uh, breath sounds we could somewhat appreciate on the right side okay so where all you are getting reduced breath sounds reduced vocal resonance you don't get bronchial breath sound oh. but in a pleural effusion normally this is the your lung and you are getting pleural effusion here yes. okay this is pleural effusion okay where will you get bronchial breath sound normally this area if you are auscultating you get reduced breath, breath sound. sound okay so if it is reduced breath sound means there is no bronchial breath okay. sound but this lung parenchyma which is uh, which is collapsed here because of the effusion lung parenchyma will be collapsed here okay yes, it is like, like a solid structure there is no air in that okay so it is like a consolidation so here if you auscultate you can get bronchial breath sound bronchial okay breath sound. Yes. not here not in the area where you have fluid okay fluid. but the upper part of the fluid will be collapsed okay it is like a uh, consolidated area so that area you get a bronchial breath sound okay so always uh, try to tell that you are getting the bronchial breath sound above the pleural effusion not in the pleural effusion no right above in the pleural effusion you don't get bronchial breath sound you get only reduced breath sound yes sir yes sir okay so now i'll uh, i'll take an x ray mm-hmm. to show uh, this is uh an x-ray chest okay. uh, pa view over here we can appreciate that there is a significant uh, opacity in the uh, right uh, lower intercostal area okay so it so you have a uh, fluid level you can see here it is like a meniscus no meniscus uh, so it is like here all fluid is there okay here yes. all fluid is there so this much is fluid okay yes sir so this much is fluid okay so that is pleural effusion okay then next is what so what are the signs you got positive signs so positive signs first of all in uh, general examination huh. i had noticed that the patient has clubbing clubbing so that is very important one of the condition which produces clubbing is uh, see, malignancy, malignancy lung malignancy the then Uh, another positive finding that i found on my uh, inspection and palpation mm. were the shift of the trachea to opposite, opposite side. side left side left side the shift of the mediastinum to opposite to side opposite. that is left side yes. then so there was uh, on um, inspection also i noticed that there there were decreased uh, movement on Spruid the right fluid is there means movement will be reduced lung expansion is reduced there then yes sir and then they were bulging of the intercostal spaces okay so intercostal spaces are bulge that indicates a volume expansion condition volume then expansion. then on percussion the that don't know to a stony dull okay vocal from it is vocal resonance so oh. both were reduced reduced and percussion sh- uh, shows stony dullness stony and just above the fluid you were getting some uh, bronchial okay. resonance so that is mostly because this part of the lung will be completely okay. collapsed so if you auscultate there you may get a bronchial breath sound okay yes, so that is a clinical finding okay now you have taken an x ray that shows pleural effusion okay how do you diagnose that this is pleural effusion you can you tell the, uh, this is pleural effusion by seeing the x ray what are the differential diagnosis now you have a finding like the when when you put uh, water in a test tube you get like this no yes, both sides will be uh, upwards Upward. okay here you are getting that so yes. so that it is it is very easy to diagnose otherwise what are the other reasons for having a white shadow in x ray like this white shadow so white shadow even will be present in cases of uh, in consolidation you can get it in consolidation you can get it in tumor you can get it in uh, pleural effusion everywhere you get clinical findings will tell you that whether it is flu- fluid or something else now how do you confirm the diagnosis you have seen Uh, you have taken an x-ray now you know that this is mostly fluid but how do you confirm your x-ray 
Sorry, yeah, confirm the diagnosis. So, are oh, you looking at the cost of phrenic angle? No, here everything is cost of phrenic angle is blended, uh, cardio phrenic angle is blended, there is white homogeneous opacity, looks like fluid only. Oh, can you confirm this? You can do an ultrasound. If you want to do an ultrasound, then it will tell you that whether it is a fluid uh, or solid structure, whatever it is. So, ultrasound may be required. Sometimes it may not be required. Most of the emergency room, it may not be there. But if it is there, you can uh, make use of that. So, ultrasound can be done. Yes. How can you know that this fluid is uh, a malignant type? or uh, due to TB or some other infection? Uh, so, first of all, for, for diagnosing that, there is a criteria called the LIGHTS criteria. Okay. So, you have to tap first of all. First of all, you have to tap the fluid. So, you have to see where exactly the fluid in the chest. You can uh, either percuss and find out or do an ultrasound and find out where you have to put the needle. Then put the needle, drain the fluid out. Okay. Yes. Then once you get the fluid, then uh, you have to stop the procedure, then you have to take an x-ray. Normally, you have to take an x-ray, otherwise you may miss pneumothorax. This is one condition which can induce pneumothorax, tapping of the fluid. So, you have to repeat an x-ray and see there is no pneumothorax in that patient and send this uh, sample for analysis. analysis. In that LIGHTS criteria will come. What is LIGHTS criteria? Uh, LIGHTS criteria, uh, the, the first major criteria is the uh, the protein in the pleural fluid will be greater than 0.5 of what is of the protein levels in the serum. Okay. Then the second criterion is the pleural LDH, lactate dehydrogenase, will be greater than 0.6 of the serum lactate dehydrogenase. Okay. And the LDH in the pleural fluid uh, should be uh, greater than two-third of the upper limit of the okay. serum. So that will tell you that the fluid is inflammatory or non-inflammatory. Non -inflammatory. Which all conditions you get inflammatory uh, or exudative uh, uh, pleural effusion? So, in uh, infections such as, uh, so if there is a pneumonia, TB. Okay, pneumonia, TB. Uh, malignancy. Malignancy also, also you get inflammatory. Non-inflammatory? Non-inflammatory. Or a transudate. Transudate, we get it in congestive cardiac failure. So, any fluid overload condition Condition. like cardiac failure, liver Chronic failure, kidney, kidney disease, anemia, periphery, all these conditions you can get. Uh, pleural patient. So, ascites, which side is uh, more uh, 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 in uh, patients who is having ascites, which side pleural patient is more more common? Ascites. Right or left? In ascitic patient, we normally see in the right side. Right. Okay. Can you get uh, pleural patient in any of the abdominal condition on the left side? It is pancreatitis. Pancreatitis is the one condition you can get left side of pleural effusion. Okay. So, right side is seen in many other conditions uh, uh, including ascites. But one uh, abdominal condition which produces left side pleural effusion will be pancreatitis. Okay. Now, how do you treat this patient? So, treatment first, uh, investigation, <coughs> we've already done the uh, chest x-ray. Pleural X fluid, uh, aspiration, uh, chest x-ray is And we've diagnosed what kind of fluid it is. Okay. And so, malignant cells you have to pick up from the fluid. Yes, okay, sir. then. And then after that, uh, when we come to the treatment aspect, we can uh, insert an intercostal. Uh, okay, so fluid. since here it is a malignancy, sometimes even if you tap the fluid, it will reaccumulate. Mm -hmm. After one or two days, it will be reaccumulating. When you are tapping the fluid, it will be mostly hemorrhagic. Okay, mm -hmm. hemorrhagic fluid is most common in uh, malignancies. And even if you tap it, again it will reaccumulate. So what will what uh, what is the next treatment option? Uh, so we can we have to treat the underlying condition that one is, is malignancy should be treated. Otherwise, what will happen? Yes. So if it repeatedly coming, if the malignancy is not responding to your treatment, what happens? So we can do pleurodesis. Pleurodesis. Pleurodesis means is a one. There are two pleuras, and uh, either you remove the pleura, and only lung will be there. Okay. Otherwise, you put injection, uh, some injection which which can adhere these two pleura together. Okay. Yes, so that space will be removed. Okay. So that is also possible. Or you permanently put catheter inside the uh, pleural space. But that is not practical. You have to do pleurodesis or uh, pleurectomy, removal of pleura, pleura. Something has to be done. And primary, we, uh, we have to treat the malignancy. Okay. Now, what happened to the patient afterwards? Uh, the patient, uh, after 
we finish doing the procedure yeah. he'll get a relief of okay so that is very important in emergency room somebody is having breathlessness because of fluid sometimes we have to remove the fluid and then only patient will improve only thing is massive pleural effusion uh, like suppose somebody is having a massive pleural effusion when you are removing large amount of volume what happens to the patient uh, they, that there is a condition called as re expansion pulmonary edema it is so you are uh, suppose you are so much fluid is there for example this much fluid is there okay so you are removing the whole fluid more than 3 4 liters suddenly what happens the lung will expand the lung which was collapsed it will expand full expansion will occur okay so that produces more negative pressure and it produces uh, like all the blood vessels will send blood to this area because it's a negative pressure area okay so slowly it'll develop pulmonary edema right. this is called as re expansion pulmonary right. edema so in that case when there is a massive pleural effusion either you remove it slowly or daily you remove don't remove it all together in one day slowly one or two liters you drain today tomorrow you drain like that if the patient develops pulmonary edema again treatment of uh, pulmonary edema is same okay you put the uh, niv you uh, just uh, give some more fluid into this space back so that the pressure can uh, negative pressure can reduce okay so that is re expansion pulmonary edema but always after pleural tapping remember to take a chest x ray that is very important why we are taking chest x ray is it to rule out after pleural tapping the pneumothorax pneumothorax that is the most important clinical uh, problem we are going to face after the tapping yes, okay sir. sometimes it can, if you are not doing it properly then patient can even develop infections yes, iatrogenic infection otherwise pleural tapping is a safe procedure okay okay yes sir thank you thank you sir